I've had the sourdough for almost a year now, or sorry, I've had the sourdough starter for almost a year now. One of my best friends gave it to me as part of a larger birthday gift last summer. And I mean, I was so excited to get it, but just also terrified that I would screw it up. And it was the special old world sourdough starter. So I really only had one try. It's just wild because I used to love to bake. Like I've made creme brulee and cheesecake from scratch. And you know, my husband and I make pies, but that's, it's easy compared to bread, especially sourdough. Sourdough is so hard. There's so many variables. I have a lot more time now. And when life gives you dried sourdough starter, you make bread. So that's what I'm going to try. I'll learn something new no matter what. Uh, so today I'm going to read through the recipe, make sure I have all the ingredients. And I don't know, maybe start rehydrating the starter. I, I don't know. So according to the internet, the first thing I'm going to need is some unbleached flour. And I just ran out of my old container, but... No. <laughs> this is sugar. <laughs> I don't have flour. <sighs> okay. On my last grocery store run, I went and I got the right flour, so we're good there. I actually have done a little more research since last time, and a lot of recipes recommend two types of flour, a white flour and a wheat or rye flour to give a bit more flavor to the sourdough starter. Um, so that's what I did. And now I think I can actually get started. Here we have the envelope that I got in the mail with the starter and everything I need. Uh, there's the pretty floral card with the starter in it. Uh, then the instructions on how to start the starter, a recipe, and a, um, cardboard? <laughs> so what exactly is in this envelope? Uh, as far as I can tell, it's a dried sample of an existing old world starter that I can rehydrate and then use myself. <laughs> so Shana, tell me what's going on with this, uh, flower situation. <laughs> When I went to the grocery store, I grabbed an all-purpose unbleached flour and a whole wheat unbleached flour. And then I noticed a hole in the wheat flour, so I ran back to swap them. And I got the same brand, but this is also white flour. So now I just have two things of white flour <laughs> and no wheat flour. So we took a little road trip to a QFC and bought the correct flour, I think. <laughs> While the instructions that came with the sourdough starter weren't very specific, I know that in general a sourdough starter needs two things. Water, preferably filtered, and flour. So like I said before, a couple of recipes recommend using two flours, so that's what I did. I probably don't need to restate that at this point. While the instructions that came with the starter recommended a half a cup of water and a half a cup of flour, in general, for baking, I know that weight is more important because flour can be packed or not packed, so volume kind of, it can be inconsistent. So I thought I would weigh out the water and then however much weight of water I had, I would then weigh out the flour. You'll see what I'm doing. It'll make sense. And then the recipe specifically called for warm water, so I heated up a measuring cup in the microwave. I microwaved the water for 30 seconds and then I measured the temperature. It was actually a little too hot. So I decided I would wait and let it cool and then I'd measure out the flour to match the water. And then because I'm using two different flours, I had to cut the weight of the water in half and do 60 grams each. I don't know guys, every recipe I find is pretty scientific with this. I know baking is a science, okay? And not an art, but I am an artist, not a scientist. By the time that I'd measured out the flour, the water was cool enough, so I poured it over the top and uh, I decided to use a chopstick to stir. I don't know why. I ended up finding some dry patches of flour, so don't, don't, don't do that. Next up is the dried sourdough starter. I'm not gonna lie, I debated only putting in half and then like squirreling away the other half in case I screwed up. But then I worried that the proportions of flour and water wouldn't be right, so I just, I was brave and I put it all in. And that was kind of it for today. 
I did want to label the sourdough starter because I'm planning on having a couple uh, this is an old world dried sourdough starter so it, it'll, it'll be pretty quick it seems like from the instructions but I do want to do the wild sourdough starter thing where it takes like a week and a half of feeding. You know, I need to differentiate. I decided to name this one Banquo because, you know, it's old and Shakespeare is old. And when I saw Macbeth, my favorite actor, my favorite character was Banquo. The actor who played him was just great. So, you know, he was great. My sourdough will be great. And maybe I'll call the loaves McBread. Anyway, I labeled Banquo. I included like the next time I had to feed him. And like most importantly, I left a crack in the lid. Like the lid was a little bit open so that anything Banquo produces uh, will be able to escape and not explode in my refrigerator. <laughs> it's time for Banquo's first feeding. I took a look already and he's a lot bigger and he has bubbles. He's, oh, he's waking up. It's great. Today, I'm gonna feed him his flour. I'll heat up some nice water for him. I'll stir him all up and then I'll just leave him to feed and grow. I think I have to feed him again in 12 hours, which is gonna be weird because it's, it's like noon now. I'll figure something out. Side note, what do we call people that keep sourdough starters? Cause you know, we have pet parents and plant parents, actual parents of human children. <laughs> Yeast is alive. Sourdough starters are alive. So we need a title. Sourdough sitters? This is, this is a bit ad hoc. It's night two, but I just looked inside. <gasps> Bubbles! Good morning. It is day three and it's time to feed Banquo. Now, the instructions actually say that I need to feed him every 12 hours now, but if you recall, I first fed him at 12.30 p.m. in the afternoon, and I'm not awake at 12.30 at night, so I've just woken up, and I'm gonna do his third feeding. It's about 9.30 a.m., so I'll feed him right before I go to bed, um, and hopefully that's a pattern that I can keep up. Yeah, let's see how he looks this morning. going to spill out from his container while I'm gone. So I have a plate. That should keep us safe, right? Hey, so as you can tell by the horrible lighting, it is nighttime, which means it's time to do Banquo's 12 hour feeding. This might be the last time I do it because honestly, he looks very strong and ready to go. Okay, I actually think the right thing to do is the flour first. Deflate. 
Gonna give him a thorough mixing. Ooh, yes, release that gas now. <laughs> What's nice about these bowls is they actually come with a lid, leaving the crack, of course, for the gas to escape. I am tired, but it is the last day that I will be feeding Big Blue daily, and it's a special feeding, so I'll be following the instructions to do that. And then it'll just go to feeding him once a week. So that's something. Let's see how he did overnight. Whoa. Lots of bubbles. Lots of buttermilk smell. Look at all those bubbles. I need to start with putting half a cup of starter in here. And the rest is discarded. But this is a lot of flour and water. So I'm going to do something with it. I'll use you later. Next, we do half a cup of water and then three quarters of a cup of flour. Okay, I will be back at like 6.30 and we'll make some bread. Good morning. It has been one week since the first time that I fed Banquo, and I am not fearing feel I am not feeling very well today. In fact, I kind of haven't been feeling very well this week. So instead of baking Banquo on the last day that I did his first big feeding, I actually put him in the refrigerator so that he would chill out for a while. Last night I realized it was about time for me to actually bake this lovely homemade sourdough bread. I took him out of the refrigerator, portioned him out, discarded the rest, and then fed and watered him according to the directions that accompanied the sourdough starter. Today I am going to be following a recipe I found online. I will link it below. It's going to be a long day of occasionally kneading the dough, so let's get started. this bad boy rest for anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes or um, however long it takes me to get my strength back. I'm gonna go take some migraine medication now. Okay, it's been like 40 minutes and I have sort of gotten dressed because I have a work meeting in 10 minutes. So let's do this quickly, yeah? You know, it doesn't look very different. Oh, I'll show you, hello. Do, 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 do. And then this recipe specifically calls for table salt, which 
I don't know if I've ever seen that before, but okay. bad news I just checked the measurement cup again and um, I've used not nearly enough flour so um, give me a second so if this is actually half a cup instead of a whole cup then I've only put in a cup and a quarter and so I'm just going to do that again so let's do this again Call that probably done or maybe not I don't know oh my god I have no idea what I'm doing I've never made bread and tried to make it right before okay that still looks too soft I guess okay just just a little bit more a little bit more it'll be fine okay I'm, I'm gonna call that I just I the recipe is supposed to be for low kneading dough okay that's a ball that's that's fine right Ugh, I don't know Whoa, I just got like a whiff of something that actually smelled like sourdough. Shocking. Yeah, that there is like sourdough bread smell. Ooh, bread. It's getting to a point where I can't even pretend I know what I'm doing anymore. Mm. Okay, so the recipe says oil a bowl. I'm just gonna be using canned gnostic spray because I can't be bothered to get my actual canola oil out of the pantry. Sticky, 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 sticky. Oh my goodness, this is so sticky. Yeah, okay, see why I need the oil. Yeah. Now I wish I had a bowl scraper. That would be a good investment at this point. <laughs> And then the recipe wants me to attempt to flip this over to get oil on the other side. But I'm, just to be safe, I'm also gonna do this, because why not? Whoop, no, 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 come on. Okay, there we go. Um, and now I have fingerprints in there. Yeah, this is fine, this is fine. Uh, and then I believe we cover this and let it rest again while I go to my kneading, okay. I have come to a decision that I am not actually going to finish this bread today. The recipe actually states a time when you're supposed to put it in the refrigerator to rest overnight, and originally I was going to skip that as the recipe says I can, but I'm just not feeling it, so let's do the needs. Risen, so hopefully I didn't ruin the yeast situation too much by uh, not putting in enough flour at first. According to the recipe online, uh, not only does this whoop, function as kneading, but it also redistributes the yeast, which I've never heard of, but that's okay. Whoop! I do not know everything there is to know. In fact, I would say I know hardly anything. 
Oh, uh, I think it's another half an hour, maybe it's another hour. I don't know, uh, but I'll be back when the recipe says I should come back. And in case you're wondering, I am using a damp kitchen towel because binging with Babish says to do that in his videos and he seems to know more than I do. Hopefully this is the last time. Let's see. started baking bread as a kid. That tactileness is wonderful. Okay, the recipe says to cover tightly and refrigerate overnight. It smells like sourdough. Wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, it held its shape pretty good that time. <laughs> it's sticking to the sill pad. It's a sticky pie. <laughs> but doesn't it smell like sourdough? It does. Definitely should have bought the parchment paper. What happened? Uh, chaos, it's fine. Um, what? what is that was hot. Jeez. Okay. It looks awful. What's wrong? Um. That's what we're getting. <laughs> I absolutely have to leave for my restaurant reservation now, so I'm just going to check the bread and hope that it's good enough.
It sure is a bread. Maybe it'll taste amazing. <laughs> while we're at dinner, and then we'll try it. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty doughy. <laughs> I think Paul Hollywood would be upset with that. You think it's underbaked? really underbaked. Oh. The ends are probably good. Give me an end. Don't cut yourself. Oh, it's pretty doughy too. Oh, okay. What went um, wrong? I don't know. to be delicious bread. It's gonna be. It delicious. wasn't delicious last time. So it has been a week since the last time I tried to make a disastrous loaf of bread. Well technically I didn't try to make the disastrous loaf. I tried to make a loaf of bread and it was a disaster. It's been a week since the last time I tried to make sourdough and we all know how that turned out. What went um, wrong? I don't know. Last time I used a recipe that I found online which called for a 50% hydration dough and I don't know if that's what this starter even has. So today I am using the recipe that came with the kit. Unfortunately, this recipe makes four loaves of bread and calls for over nine cups of flour. And after feeding a sourdough starter, I just don't have that much flour to spare. So I'm gonna be cutting this in half and only making two loaves. Binko is actually doing quite nicely. I don't know if you can see, but there's a ridge where he has risen up and then fallen back down. Full disclosure, I was awake at four o'clock this morning to drive my parents to the airport. So I actually saw him at his peak, but I didn't take any footage. But um, at least the evidence is there. This recipe, like most recipes I've seen now, does call for an overnight rest, uh, six to 10 hours. Next time, we'll see how it's risen. I'll divide the dough. I'll put one half in the refrigerator. Uh, so I can make it another time, assuming that it turns out this time. <sighs> all of a sudden, all my confidence is draining out of me. There was so much going against the spread, <laughs> and now all of a sudden I'm remembering all of that. But now I'm just scared. Okay, it's fine. I'm learning a new skill. It's going to be okay. If I fail at this one, I'll just make bread pudding. You know what? Paul Hollywood is not greeting this bread. It's going to be okay. <laughs> so I actually just realized something. Um, when we started, I, I, had I had accidentally bought the wrong flour because I meant to get wheat flour and I actually got this flour. But this is actually bread flour. This is what the recipe calls for. So, I mean, it was a mistake, but at least I still get to use it. It's not like a waste. much flour. <laughs>
I'm going to pour the hot water here because just in case it's still too hot, I want to make sure Banquo won't die. Whoop, well that didn't work, did it? You know how to cook, you know how to bake already, but this part of the learning experience for you is you gotta be patient even when we're filming cooking. I'm sorry, that sounded a bit preachy. No, it was fine, you're right. You're not wrong. Oh my god, it's so sticky. What's on your mind? I just don't know what I'm doing and it just seems like everything I'm doing is messing up. I'm pretty sure I've killed the yeast already. My hands are all sticky. <laughs> At least if I've killed the yeast already, I have finally defeated my nemesis, plastic wrap. Good job. Thank you. Do you think it rose at all? It's hard to tell. It hasn't been very long. It's true, only half an hour. Okay. So form it into a ball. Oh my god, it's so much dough. I'm just gonna gather some flour preemptively. That's so beautiful. I don't know why dough is so beautiful. It's life. Oh, there are some bubbles. I swear I just saw some bubbles. I heard the bubble pop. Oh, Not dead. Not dead. He's alive! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, there are bubbles. I'm so happy. Oh, there's some bubbles. Oh my god, there's a huge bubble. That's what I call bread. Okay, I'm gonna rest it inside of here though. Oh, it's the last one? Yeah. Ooh.
absolutely wild to me how easy it is for me to think, did I screw this up already? I thought since I don't have an actual proving drawer and it's cold where I'm living right now, I thought I'll just pop the oven a bit, turn it off, have some steam in there, uh, try to like create a proving drawer effect. Rise, my pretty. And now the dough's dry. I think it doubled in size. The recipe wants it to triple. I'm preheating the oven now for actual baking. I'm gonna coat the top in olive oil because that was in the original recipe. And we're just gonna see what happens because if this goes bad again, I have another loaf that I can work with that's in the fridge. So let's see what happens. Okay, last time I think a mistake I made was not slashing the bread deeply enough. So I'm gonna try to do that this time. It's been 15 minutes. If it's not golden brown, we can give it another five. Oh, at least when the steam is working. Yeah, let's give it at least another five minutes. Getting closer. This really is my least favorite part of baking when I you have to like, wait for five minutes, check on it. Wait for five minutes, check on it. Okay, like it's looking good. It's looking okay. It's looking fine. Another, another five minutes. Ah, check. Not done, check, not done. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And you know what? It smells good. Awesome, okay. We turn the temperature down now. Awesome, cool. See you in 20. Oh, look at that. I just Googled it. And the internal bread temperature that we want is approximately 190 degrees, so. Got my instant read here. Oh yeah, we're good. Bread coming out. I'm just gonna say this one looks so much better than the last bread that I attempted to make. I'm gonna let this cool for a few minutes and then I will take it off, put it on a rack and let it cool for even longer and then we'll open it. And hopefully it will be baked. I did temperature check it this time. So, chances are a lot better. Like it never happened. It's so thin. Why is it so thin? Where did I f up this time? You can post it to Reddit and see what they say. Okay, time to cut it open. The crust is crusty. That's a good sign. Still pretty warm. I'm pretty sure the very middle is underbaked. Not as underbaked. Like maybe if I let it cool, we might be okay. I bet it was a proving problem. Are you so gonna eat it? Yeah, we can eat it. I thought because I cut the middle that um, the inside would get cooked first. So I guess I temp checked the side because I thought that would be like more difficult. And the outside looks good, but the... Mm. How is it? It tastes really good. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. That's good. I'm gonna eat it now. Like it's definitely heavy, but it is good. This is edible. Yeah, it has that sourdough tang. Mm -hmm. mm. Maybe third time's a charm. <laughs> You're just like, I'm eating bread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> okay, well, I'll try again later. <laughs> Today, I used the other half of the dough that originally I had put in the refrigerator to make another loaf of bread. On this side is the bread I made yesterday. Even though it's been cooled overnight, it's still kind of doughy in the middle. I mean, it's a little stale now. It's still pretty, I mean, just doughy. And that's, 
it's perfectly edible. This is all from the new loaf. We ate half of this yesterday. It was delicious. And then today I got a little bit more rise, which was really nice to see. And it's way more cooked inside. Um, this time I did, when I measured that it seemed the right temperature, but time wasn't quite up yet. I did end up saying, oh, I'll give it two more minutes. And then accidentally, uh, I think it went seven more minutes. So the top is a little more, let's say varnished. <laughs> I mean, it still tastes really good. It still smells really good, like sourdough. The texture is a lot better. It still doesn't have any of the height that I think I would want. There are two possibilities. One is that there just wasn't enough dough that the recipe thinks I'll have a smaller loaf pan. It specifically does say loaf pan though. The other possibility is that I killed a chunk of my yeast with the water that was too hot when I originally made the dough. And if that's the case, this is the best result I possibly could have gotten out of this. Given that, I am happy. It's kind of a success. Both of these loaves are completely edible and delicious, unlike the completely horrible overbaked loaf from a couple days ago. But it's not exactly what I have in mind. I might just make the same amount of dough again, and instead of cutting it in half, just doing the whole thing and making a bread that's like this height. I mixed a new batch of Banquo dough uh, yesterday and then last night after letting him rest for somewhere between six and ten hours I loaded him into the loaf pan and then I put the loaf pan in the oven overnight like not on. I put him in an off oven overnight and um he's huge now. Duh. Duh. Oh my, oh no, 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 oh no. The plastic wrap is part of the bread now. Oil your plastic wrap, folks. So you wanna maintain the bubbles mm. is the main thing. I doubt this will completely ruin it. That's not bad, all things considered. That could have gone a lot worse. Plastic wrap is my mortal enemy and someday I will vanquish it, <laughs> but not today. Today it won. So I need to cut the slice in the top of the loaf to let it rise properly. And the last, the last three times I've done this, it's been very sticky, which has messed up with it. So I'm just going to spray the knife with nonstick spray and see if that makes it easier. <laughs> Nope, this did not make it easier. Look at that bubble. Oh my god. Wow. I should pop that, right? I don't know. Just... I think I should pop it or it's gonna burn. You're think... the expert. Well, think of like pizza crust, right? In pizza crust, if there's a big bubble, it's burned. And I don't want this to burn, so I'm gonna... Okay. I'm gonna... <laughs> Sorry, Bingo. So first, I've had a pan heating up in there. Um, I'm going to pour this water into it so it's going to create steam and that's going to help a nice crust develop on the outside of the banquo loaf to make bread. I forgot I was going to do that. <laughs> and now since banquo is so huge, I'm going to position him right over the pan because I'm a little afraid he'll uh, spill out. So see you in 20 minutes, buddy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my <laughs> He definitely needs more time because the instructions have it at 475 until the outside is completely brown, and then we'll drop the temperature to 275 to cook the insides. It's a lot like making shoe pastry, which I don't make real shoe pastry, but for Passover, we have these matzo meal popovers that I make every year, and it's the same sort of thing. Really high temperature to start, build up that crust, and then cook the middle through. So, five more minutes. <laughs> Ooh, that's what we want. Look at that nice strong crust. So that crust color, it's going to get stronger as we bake through the middle, so I am going to turn down the oven. Bread is done, according to the internet, when it reaches 190 internally, and this is a huge loaf of bread. So we really don't want it to be raw in the middle, like the first loaf that I made, because if it's, like that was like, you know, it didn't kill us to eat that. If this is raw in the middle, it's gonna kill us. So I'm gonna use my thermometer. Uh, the air is now getting very warm because the oven's hot. Okay, I'm gonna stick it into the middle then. As you can see, it says 130, now lower than that, 125. Still dropping in the center there. Wow, it's under 100 inside. So it's very much still dope. 
Hi folks, Rose here, uh, Shayna's friend and part-time camera person. She had a meeting in the middle of filming this video, so I'm in charge of Banquo for the time being. Pray for me. Oh yeah, it's warm enough. I am very happy to say that I did not destroy Banquo. He is perfectly fine. Just look at him. He looks so good. You did a great job. Thank you. I really hope I didn't mess up. No, you did. It's fine. <laughs> What's the verdict? Oh, he cooled a little bit. Yeah. Um, in the pans, that's a bit soggy on the outside now. Yeah, I'm going to let the condensation evaporate for a little bit, and then we will cut into him and see how we did. It's time. Let me tell you, that cut really nice. So good. Oh my god. And that's so heavy, but to still have a pretty dang good inside. I am so happy with that. It smells good too. I know. Oh that sourdough baby. I'm gonna cut us a, a slice. <laughs> it's massive. I can't believe we cut all the way through. Okay. That could be a supermarket slice. Oh my god. How is it? That's the best one yet. I can't tell if it's just a tiny bit underbaked or if it's just not fully cool yet because it's still a little bit like moist, but maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> oh my god, the sourdough flavor. Oh, and the texture, it's just, it's so, you know what it's like? It's when you go to like a really good like steakhouse dinner for graduation and they bring those like freshly baked breads and they're so moist and they're steaming inside. That's what this reminds me of. You know what? This was worth the effort. I'm gonna say it. This was worth it. I'll do it again. I'm really bad at being a sourdough sitter. In order to force myself to feed Banquo, I'm going to bring you with me. I try to feed him every week. Some weeks that turns into every two weeks. He's still kicking. I'm going to take a cup of Banquo. I'm going to actually measure it this time instead of just going volumetrically. I'm going to put the same weight of water and flour. This isn't always how Banquo has looked. Not quite sure what happened. Maybe measuring will be the solution. Now this is just discard. I use this for pancakes, cookies. Okay, and with that, I have fed Banquo. I'm going to leave him sitting on the counter overnight just to give him a chance to grow and develop and just in case he gloops out. Thank you for following along and making sure I did my sourdough chores. Good morning, Banquo. Did you have a productive night? This is what I was able to scrape up. I'm gonna see if I can turn it into some dough or something. I should have known that would have happened. I'm gonna add some flour and some salt, stir it again, and then let it rise. That actually rose really well. So I'm obviously not gonna turn on my whole oven to bake this tiny loaf of bread, so we're gonna use my toaster oven. I rolled the dough into a ball, and it has a little bit of oil to keep it from sticking to the plastic wrap, and I'm gonna let it rise again, and then I'm gonna put it in there. It is time. That was easy. Oil your plastic wrap. Rise well. How does it look? How does it look? How does it look? Wow, it looks baked. Not bad at all for an improvised recipe. Hi everybody. For this winter holiday, my parents got me a proper sourdough crock. This one is King Arthur brand. I'm very excited to try it out because it means I finally have a good place to put Banquo.
As you can see, he developed a little bit of this liquid on top. I forget what it's called, but apparently it's not good for anything and I should just discard it. Now I'm going to measure the sourdough crock without the lid so that I know what to tar out, remove next time I need to feed my sourdough starter. 430 grams. So I'm keeping about 200 grams in here, and now I will do what I normally do, which is heat up 200 grams of water, put in 200 grams of flour, and bank will be fed. Awesome, and I will just let this rest and rise, hopefully, and uh, we'll check back when he's grown again. Hi everybody, welcome back. We are here today with Banquo, my sourdough starter. If you've been watching any of the YouTube shorts that I have filmed, uh, you've seen me feed him, him explode, me make dough out of him, and uh, most recently, him moving to his fancy new sourdough crock. Ooh. Now I know that you're thinking since you're watching another sourdough video from me that it must be that I've made that wild yeast starter that I promised at the end of my last video. Yeah, not so much, but it's okay. <laughs> because I don't just have Banquo anymore. To make a long story short, it was my husband and mine's first wedding anniversary recently, and we went to a restaurant called The Herb Farm, which is an extremely fancy restaurant where they source a lot of what they use for the meal from their farm. And this includes a sourdough that they serve, and honestly, was absolutely incredible, possibly the best sourdough that I've ever had. Moving on. One of the benefits of this very fancy meal was that we got to talk to the chef somewhat. And at one point he was talking about the sourdough starter and how they'd had it for like 30 years. And me being me, of course I said, oh, do you give out samples? And he said, yeah, we can look into that. And lo and behold, when I got the bag of my leftovers in it at the end, I also received some sourdough starter. It's so beautiful. It's so bubbly. And I'm so excited to have a new sourdough starter along with Banquo. This one I decided to name Jack Jr. after the chef Jack. It has also been a while since I have fed Banquo. So today I'm going to be feeding both sourdough starters and then tomorrow uh, after the loaves have fermented a bit overnight I will be making bread of both of them and we will get to taste test and decide which one we like more. And when I say we I, I do mean me and James not I can't send you bread I'm sorry. I would love to but I can't. I think I overfilled it again. Well, nothing to do. <laughs>
Good morning. We had a very successful rise last night. I'm very happy about that. In fact, uh, because Bankpo is a little bit spilling out of his crock, I thought I would just make the dough right now. We'll see how it turns out. I'm not sure I have all the bread flour that I need, so I might have to switch to all purpose, but we're gonna get two loaves of bread, one from each starter. That's very cool. So let's get started on that. According to the recipe, I'm supposed to add salt right now, but personally, I don't like adding salt with the yeast right there, so I'm going to add it in the next phase of bread mixing. So for now we're done, gonna mix this together. Oh, it smells really good. I love the smell of bread. hard to explain, but this really does smell different than Vanquo. We have Vanquo and Jack Jr. Awesome. It's been like 45, 50 minutes, so Let's take a look at the dough and add some salt and, you know, get on to the next rise. For the salt, I'm obviously using my homemade sea salt from that one video that one time. It's been a while, we still got some cooking. Definitely got some rise there, which is nice. 10 grams of sea salt. Awesome. Oh, this is gonna be a lot of sea salt, okay. <laughs> Jack Jr. Also looking pretty good. I'm gonna need more salt too. Rise, my pretty. It's clearly nighttime now, and I'm gonna check on the bread and shape everything into loaves we baked tomorrow. I did end up putting them in an off oven earlier because my house is just really cold right now. So this is Banquo. Yes, definitely have doubled in size achieved. And then Jack Jr. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. nice, awesome, cool. This is Banquo. This is Jack Jr. I do have this, still have not figured out how to get it to work, but we're gonna try again today. Here we go. Oh, oh, it's working. Oh my God. I can't believe that actually worked. Oh my God. Okay. I'm gonna do like baguette cuts on Jack Jr. Just so 
I can tell the difference. Wonderful. And now they're gonna go in the oven. I'm going to take some water and pour it in here. And that'll create some nice steam, which will hopefully humidify the bread, create a good crust. Hello. Hello. Hello, camera. Hello, camera. Can you guess which one is Banquo and which one is Jack Jr.? Ooh. There are no telltale signs. Well, I am going to guess that this one is the restaurant and this one is Banquo. How did you guess that? I was looking at the color of the bread and it seemed very slightly darker on the inside on the, on the diagonal one. Wow. Good job. Thank you. And you need to look for that because the restaurant feeds their sourdough starter with like a whole wheat. Yeah. And Banco has been pure all-purpose flour for a while now. Yes. Very smart. Let's cut into it, shall we? Oh gosh, the crust on this one just looks absolutely perfect. Oh my God. <laughs> Ooh, yum, yum. This one is a little denser and I wonder if that's cause bread flour, if I needed it too much. Oh, it could just be because I didn't cut the top deep enough so it didn't rise. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna start with Banquo. Probably. Now Jack Jr. Okay, I will say between the two of them, mm. Jack Jr. smells more sourdoughy. Mm. I think the lesson learned is probably I need to feed Banquo more frequently. Mm. Jack Jr. is delicious. I really think it does come down to like, I haven't been upkeeping Banquo. And even though he rose so much, he was nice and bubbly, mm. but maintenance is more important than one-time care. This is extremely good. It's dense, but it's not like claggy. It's like just, it's just enough texture. There really is nothing like a fresh baked, home baked loaf of sourdough bread. So now I have to keep two sourdough stars alive. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> so we're gonna eat all this bread and you can't, again, sorry. Um, but I do have other videos if you wanna check those out. All the links will be on screen and everything. Feel free to like and subscribe and comment and I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>